Welcome to the Graduation Equity Webinar. I'm Kevin Anderson, System Improvement Program Supervisor Lead, and today we are talking about family engagement best practices. This meeting is being recorded and it should be available in the next couple of days on YouTube. Uh, we have closed captions, so they're available in the menu if you wanna take advantage of that. And our PowerPoint is posted on the Graduation Equity Webinar page. If you wanna follow along, we're also gonna drop it in the chat. This webinar is brought to you through the Office of Student Engagement and Supports within the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction. Uh, at OSPI, we believe each student needs to be prepared for post-secondary pathways, careers, and civic engagement. Our series was created with the purpose of highlighting practices that increase access to education and ultimately to graduation. Through our webinars, we're striving to think critically about historical contexts and the opportunities that we have to get curious about and dismantle policies and practices that don't serve our youth. We wanna make it possible for each student to have access to the instruction and to the support that will make them successful in school and in life. Uh, at OSPI, we're partnering with our local tribes in consultation. This past summer through OSPI, I've gotten to visit the Nisqually Cultural Center and the Squaxin Museum uh, to learn more of our local history. Uh, it's been a really great opportunity to learn from our local tribes and to get to know more about their life ways. Uh, we ask that the participants of this meeting honor the traditional lands on which each of you are located today. We'll have links in the resource sheet to help you. Uh, in my life, I mostly travel the intersection of the traditional lands of the Squaxin Island, the Coast Salish, and the Nisqually tribes. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the indigenous people who have stewarded this land since time immemorial. We still live here today. We're glad to have you. We're glad to be here. Uh, tribal consultation is a great way to get to know your local tribes and begin relationships that benefit students and their families. And if you'd like to know more about it, we'd love to connect you with our Office of Native Education. Uh, I think it's important that we center each of our webinars with an equity focus. Uh, communicating powerfully with families is definitely an equity move. Folks at home want to know what's happening with their kids, and schools have the power to invite families in and encourage their involvement. Um, I know for myself as a parent, I've definitely seen an uptick in digital engagement since the pandemic. Uh, things like virtual conferences have helped more families with busy schedules to attend and participate. Um, climate surveys can help districts think about the opportunities to address areas of concern and to highlight what's been working. Uh, one of the best things about talking to families is that you get a window into the story behind the data. If you bring a spirit of curiosity, the answers are in the community. I know I've recently been really into the strategy of what one of my mentors calls 100 cups of coffee, where you meet up with community members for one-on-ones and just hear their stories. Uh, today, we're hoping to offer you some strategies you can use to invite families into. We hope that through this webinar, you can identify whether you have a culturally responsive family partnership process. You'll be able to identify whether your process is developed with and honors family voice, and you'll be able to improve student outcomes by establishing culturally responsive family partnerships and determine ways to measure success with your family partnership process. I'm joined today by my colleague, uh, at OSPI, Francesca Matias. She's our Youth Engagement Administrative Program Supervisor and a great resource for youth and family engagement. She's brought with her Dr. Therese Moore. She's the President and Senior Consultant for the Family Outreach and Engagement Network. Uh, Dr. Moore is nationally recognized for leading the effective implementation of outcome-based family and community partnership practices for over 20 years. She has received numerous awards for her service to children, families, and educators, and she has a focus on equity, excellence, and integrity. She's also the author of Unreached, What Every Educator Wants to Know About Engaging Families for Equity and Student Achievement, and the recipient of Education Week's 2017 National Award for Outstanding Leadership in the area of family outreach and engagement. Dr. Moore was identified as one of six emerging leaders in the field of family engagement by Harvard's Family Research Project for successfully creating collaborative family and community partnership structures 
in one of the most diverse districts in the country. Um, we'll also have some panelists with us a little bit later on from Highline and Auburn School Districts. We are so excited to have this awesome group to talk to us about the work that they've been doing. All right, um, next we're gonna go to Francesca Matias. Um, she's gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on at OSVI and some cool resources that we have that you can use. Thank you, Kefi. Um, again, my name is Francesca Matias and I am the Youth Engagement Program Supervisor here at OSPI. Uh, to start off, uh, we are excited to share the new 10-part module series that was created in partnership with the new teacher project. These modules are part of a collective toolkit that's available uh, to you and provide support in continuous improvement in family and community engagement. If you haven't had a chance to look at the care package, we included a short video on the five best practices of family engagement. It includes partnering with families and communities promotes learning for all. Engaging families and communities is ongoing work that needs to be nurtured. Information about the effectiveness of family and community engagement can be found in student data systems, survey results, and conversations with families. Trust is foundational to family and community engagement efforts. And in believing in the value of the relationship and offering time and space for authentic connections. And then also engagement can look different for each family in each community. And it's a genuine step um, in building foundation with families. In 2020, the legislator had directed OSPI to form a work group in partnership with the Department of Children, Youth and Families to create a work group uh, with the goal to identify a family engagement framework. The work group reviewed current practices at the time in Washington, but they also looked at policies and practices in other states. And again, to help identify best practices that can be adopted throughout Washington. The work group included family members with a variety of backgrounds and experiences, as well as appointed representatives. And by July 2021, the work group reported its findings and recommendations to the legislator, and a link to that report is in a couple slides. Within the report to the legislator, the work group identified core values when engaging families and communities. And if you joined us back in May for the Youth Co-Design webinar, you'll see that a lot of the same best practices and principles to creating an authentic co-design space for youth applies to families as well which includes the shared power and responsibility and building the capacity to um, bring the parents and families in. Relationships are the cornerstone of all family engagement and they're built on trust, communication, and recognizing value of families and continuing to nurture that relationship. Uh, family engagement promotes equity and success for all families, achieving equitable outcomes by recognizing the diversity of the family types and using multi-generational lens and through cultural and linguistic competency and responsiveness. The report to the legislator that I mentioned a couple slides ago is linked here. And the work group defined family and community engagement as a full and equitable partnership with families, educators, providers, and communities to support learners' development from birth all the way through college and even career. It is a collective responsibility. That means doing with, not doing, not doing for families, excuse me. 
And family engagement is one of the key components of OSPI's mission, and it's an essential component of M an MTSS framework. Family and community engagement has been and continues to be a key and successful student supports. In 2016, the legislator created the Washington Integrated Student Supports Protocol, or WISP, and they shared five common components to successful implementation of student supports, uh, which includes collaboration, school partners and families, as well as community organizations. It's student-centered and family-driven. Uh, the students are engaged as co-constructors of solutions to the challenges they face, and families have a primary decision-making in the care for their children. And lastly, school staff acknowledge that families can be both full partners, uh, working to ensure their student success, um, and also be in need of support from the school to create a more stable home environment for their student. Thanks, Francesca. Thank you. Um, next, we're gonna go to Dr. Moore to talk a little bit about her model of family engagement practices and some cool questions you can ask yourself um, to look at your system. So thanks. These kinds of things that this process incur encourages. So, um, so they have a lot of these things that are listed here and then they have their own things and they have staff that come up with the things that they wanna do. So this is not about dictating how you do it, what you do. It's about making sure you have a platform that enables you to get to the thing that the, process, the research says, relational, linked to learning, culturally responsive, respectful, collaborative, interactive. So Isaiah and Lolita have those things. Um, but if you don't, here are some examples. You can have multicultural panels, you can have Q&A gatherings, you can have um, parent leadership and cultural advisory groups. You may wanna consider having virtual meetings with groups of families where you can ask the questions that are in this process. Um, and you wanna make sure parents are leading in, that, in, in those virtual meetings. Um, you may wanna have neighborhood visits. I know sometimes um, home visits um, are not always a part of a, a district's process. Um, but if you do go into neighborhoods or apartment cabanas or communities where your families live, you can set up a time to ask the questions or have parents ask these questions. Because if you get the information to this, to with these process questions, then what you'll find is you'll do a better job at having the kind of relationship that you need to have to have your student outcomes be connected to effective culturally responsive family partnerships. So. As we wrap up, I wanna again, ask you to consider your student outcome goal, build on what you already know about the concepts that are listed within this process. And you want to make sure that even if you don't ask all the questions that maybe your team decides, you know, this is something that we really don't know and we really haven't asked our families. What we need to know about our students and our families' cultural norms and assets. Now, norms and assets might be words that are kind of education ease. So you may decide you want to ask hopes and dreams, but make sure that you are not just asking your families that are always in the building. You want to ask the families who you've not reached and those families that you know have a culture different from those you've been effective with in terms of helping their students succeed. So, The goal of this process is not to have busy work or a new strategic plan goal or um, uh, extra events and activities. The hope is like Isaiah and Lolita, all of you will consider what you're already doing, what your strategic plan goals are in connection with engaging with families as partners. And then you wanna come up with ways to either have your small group or your one-on-one, -on -one, during or before pre-scheduled events that are already happening. And you want to have a diverse group of families answering some of those questions. Then you wanna collectively make meaning, focus on insights you glean from families about the five authentic leadership practice questions. So families will tell you, you may, you know, like Lita and um, Isaiah, 
they already have meetings and, and connections with families throughout the year. So they selected opportunities and times to add those questions, maybe one, maybe two, throughout the year in areas where they felt they might not have as much strength in their, their process around gleaning information from families that they could utilize consistently throughout the year. And then lastly, you want to intentionally apply the insights you get from families throughout the year. So thank you. We hopefully, you feel like we covered the three things that I said we would cover. And now I'm gonna turn over to Kefi so that um, she can let Lolita and Isaiah have a little more uh, input around what they do and how they do it in connection with this process. Thank you, Dr. Moore. I think we should all give her some love in our reactions buttons. And um, it is great to hear about this process and just, um, you know, the, the questions behind it, you know, they are deceptively simple because I think when you dig into them, there is so much, so much more there <laughs> to find. Um, we are very appreciative. So I hope you're soaking up all the, all the love. I am. Thank you. We do want to take a couple minutes for questions. Um, and so Jocelyn, do you want to uh, load us up? What's the first question? Yeah, we have three questions in the Q&A. The first one is a general question. What is a recommended tech solution for reaching parents slash families? And and for those especially that don't do email, like School Messenger, Skyward Blast, they're not working for us. Okay. And you know what? I'm smart enough to know that even though I served on the district level as the director for this work um, for 17 years, I'm still in the game, but I'm now an advisor and support for the people who are directly doing it. So I'm going to de defer to Lolita and Isaiah to respond to that question. So Isaiah or Lolita, do you want to answer? They said what they have is not working or or there's something about wanting to communicate effectively with parents. What have you found? Sure. I mean, it's it's multimodal. It's really going to depend. When we ask families how they want to be communicated with, they will often share with us. Um, we actually have a new tool here in Highline this year that we're trying out, uh, and it's called Parent Square, and it's um, my understanding that it's a little bit more family friendly. We have some folks on our team who've had a chance to take a look at it, um, but oftentimes we'll hear from families and they want personal phone calls, and so we will make personal phone calls, or we have access for our schools to have language lines so they can access language to be able to call families. But for this question, there's not really one one answer, it really is multimodal because it's going to depend on the family. I agree with Lolita. How about you, Isaiah? Yeah, I, I don't really have anything to add. I mean, I think this is a common issue in every district. I mean, we're trying to find that that perfect communication model as well. I mean, uh, we know that we're not reaching every family, even with the communication systems that we currently have in place, you know, but uh, at the same time, we're going to continue to try and not give up. Uh, we can definitely do better. So uh, it just depends on whatever that communication model uh, that's going to best fit for your district. So I know that's those are the conversations we're having as a district. Thank you. We have uh, another question that got upvoted. Dr. Moore, often when I speak to school leaders as a staff and parent about family engagement partnership opportunities. Admins share that their teachers do not have the capacity for that work. For instance, I hear statements as teachers do not have the capacity to outreach to families outside of email. They don't have the time to connect with families outside of their contractual hours. Teachers are at capacity. We don't want to put more on their plate. My question is, how would you go about pushing for more family engagement and partnership when school leaders feel as though generally 
their staff don't have that capacity to do so. I like that question and I'm gonna um I'm going to answer it as as clearly and boldly as I can. So I'll have two parts. The one part is I agree and I believe that teachers um, not only haven't been given an opportunity in their teaching program to learn about um, research-based family engagement practices and, and, and processes, but then when they um, have the job and they're in the role, they barely have enough time to prepare, um, work with the student and just make um, minimal contact with the family. So my response would be, my hope is that districts will look at the research, not just my process, but look at um, the dual capacity framework, look at all the research that's out there that talks about the need and the, the necessity for the partnership with the family to happen. And most of the time, families do not necessarily just want the family liaison or the family engagement director. They love that. That's really helpful. That's the support piece. But families trust, respect, and actually acknowledge what teachers say when they establish, when the teachers initiate a connection with them. So, you know, the quick answer would be, I would recommend that schools come up with a way to um, add time for staff to make the phone calls, add time add time some kind of way. And I know with added time, there's an added cost, but if the district believes in partnerships, then they will support the capacity of the teacher in ways that um, provide whatever um, money is needed for the extra hour that they might need once or twice a week prior to school or after school, or they will give teachers the opportunity to make choices about um, how they can use their time to connect with families, or they will build in teams on the school level where the teachers who are interested and do want to engage with families have an opportunity to guide and support their colleagues in making effective connections with families. There are ways to do it. And I, um, I am giving, I'm donating 50 books to OSPI. And so I would love to put my money and expertise where my mouth is and offer um you know the first 10 or 15 serious staff members that would like to have um the book free of charge let ospi know and i would be glad to make sure they get the book so that they could give it to the people uh, the staff who don't feel like they have capacity but would like to use the book to get some specific details on how to do it i think we have a third question and then i need to give back my time to Lita and Isaiah. Yeah, the last question on our Q&A says, what are the biggest obstacles districts face for turning around their family engagement practices? And for districts that begin to make changes, what sabotages efforts to sustain those changes? You know, I think um, I'll go with the second part of the question first. What tends to sabotage districts is the fact that we, um, as, as educators and leaders, really rely on systems as our answer. So I don't think it's any particular person or leader or, uh, or I, I don't think it's necessarily a person or people who are sabotaging effective family partnership efforts or, or um, practices. I think the system is huge. Uh, it requires a lot of um, stoic, logical um, uh, efforts that take out the relational piece. I think the system, so everyone says, and we've all, you know, even before I got my doctorate, I, I learned about systems. And so I think it's sort of the antithesis of what relationships are about. So family engagement and, and partnerships are not typically part of what systems um, focus on. Systems wanna make sure that lots of things are working together in alignment with the goal of student outcomes. Systems don't necessarily honor or, or talk about or, or support what the process conditions in 
the dual capacity framework research says. They don't support relations built on trust. They don't necessarily um, honor as a priority um, culturally responsive and respectful uh, connections and practices. Uh, systems don't always allow for time to make meaning collectively. And systems don't necessarily uh, make or, or have opportunities for there to be interaction. Because typically in a system, things have to be done a certain way within a certain time frame by a certain uh, group of people. And so the system dictates that you have a group of people decide what works, what makes sense, what makes things easier for the whole system. Um, hopefully that answered what sabotages it. So it's not an individual, it's just the fact that the system is very impersonal and it requires that we meet the needs of thousands of children and families. And so that relational piece that the research talks about gets lost. And so my, my recommendation would be understanding that the system has to do what it does, but there need to be people who have time, who make time to stop and collectively make meaning about what are the outcomes we wanna see happen for our students and what kind of relationships and culturally responsive, respectful, interactive processes do we need to, to employ to make sure that the system doesn't roll over people, but that it helps us partner with the people who we haven't reached? Thank you for that question. As you can tell, I have a lot of passion behind that one. Okay, I think my time is up. Thank you, Dr. Moore. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's talk to Isaiah and Alita a little bit about um, what this work looks like in their districts. Um, I wanna give you a little bit of an introduction. Uh, Isaiah Johnson is the Executive Director of Equity and Family Engagement in the Auburn School District. Um, prior to this role, uh, Isaiah taught social studies at a junior high school for five years before moving into school administration. Uh, he started as an assistant principal and principal. And then uh, as an assistant principal, Isaiah worked hard to develop equitable systems around discipline and academics. Um, and when he became principal, he carried those same ideals and helped to establish a school community and culture where students, families, and staff uh, intentionally in shared the power to promote social and academic success for everyone. Isaiah is committed to creating um, and co-creating, co-designing and inclusive systems, structures, and policies that advance the work of equity um, so that families, students, and staff have the opportunity to thrive in the Auburn School District. We also have with us uh, Lolito, uh, Lolita excuse me, O'Donnell, the Director of Family and Community Partnerships in Highland School District. Um, as a Filipina American growing up and attending school in South King County in the 70s and 80s, uh, she didn't always feel a sense of belonging in schools. Uh, Lolita wants to be a part of the transformation in education where students and families see themselves as full members of a welcoming school community. Uh, Lolita started her career in Highline Public Schools over 24 years ago as a parent volunteer. She served in many roles, including playground monitor, special education paraeducator, uh, secretary for language learning, student placement manager, and district ombudsman. As a director of family and community partnerships, Lolita is responsible for developing, for planning, for leading and directing district level strategies uh, and staff in family engagement and community partnerships. Uh, Lolita also oversees translations and interpretations, native education, enrollment, attendance, and the Family Center. She's recognized nationally as an individual who has made significant contributions towards aligning strategies to create a sustainable system for family engagement, 
and is a recipient of the Shanita Burney Award for District Leadership. Um, yes, so we are excited to have this awesome group to talk a little bit about what the work looks like in Auburn and in Highline. Um, and I think that, um, Lolita, can we start with you? Can you tell us a little bit about you and your role um, and how these questions are um, impacting your school district and what, what the process is like for you? Sure, Kathy, thank you. And um, just a fun fact, I just want to share this. I did go to school in South King County and I went to the Auburn School District and Isaiah was not the principal way back then, but Isaiah um, was the principal at the middle school that I went to. And I just remember the first time that I met Isaiah and it, it just brought back so many memories of my time as a student and for my family. And I just love that connection that we have because I know that Isaiah is really moving the work in Auburn in, in a way that I wish it would have been like for me and my family when I, were there, when I was there. Um, so a little bit about me, you said a lot of it in the in, in the little bio. Um, I live in the community of Highline. I'm fortunate to serve here in Highline. I believe that we have fabulous leaders in our system, a fabulous cabinet, a fabulous board that really supports the work of family and community engagement and how it ties to having a culture of belonging, um, which is one of our strategic plan goals. Uh, for the work and for the process, we were fortunate we got to work with Therese. And what I loved about being able to do that was that asking those questions wasn't an add-on to what we were already doing. We were able to incorporate um, those strategies and the work that we were doing. And so we were able to, in, in spaces, ask families what were priorities for them. Um, really thinking about how we include family and voice in leadership decision-making. And, and uh, one of the big things I would say is when we started working with, with Dr. Moore was about the time we were doing our strategic plan uh, goals and we had a new superintendent, uh, Dr. Ivan Duran, and he wanted to go out into community and find out um, how our promise in Highline, our promise is to know every student by name, strength, and name graduates for the uh, future that they choose. And he wanted to know how families were experiencing that promise. And so when we talk about earn trust early, we were out having um, focus groups and conversations with families and they were able to share. And, and, and in that process of sharing, they're also sharing what outcomes they want to see to have for their children. And so that's just one of the ways that we were able to use um, our partnership with Therese to help influence our work here in Highline. I grew up in Highline, so I'm I'm proud of the work that y'all are doing too. Uh, Isaiah, do you wanna talk a little bit about what it looks like over in Auburn? Yeah, um, and thank you, Lita, for your, your kind words. And you know, I thank the world of you um, and the work you're doing at Highline. And I actually am trying to emulate the work you guys are doing at Highline as well. Um, for us, uh, working with trees has, uh, built, uh, as Lita said, uh, a, a solid foundation. Um, one of the things that, uh, I wanted to, to do in this role was to elevate our family engagement practices and, and how I wanted to do that was through, um, leadership and through strategies. And I look at the five authentic leadership practices as a way for my team of family engagement liaisons. Uh, so we have uh, approximately 20 uh, family engagement liaisons in the Auburn School District. We've increased. Uh, we started with, I think, like six. Uh, and now we have increased to 20. And we have one in every school. Some buildings share. Uh, but however, I'm excited that we actually uh, our district is taking this seriously. They're taking it seriously. And we uh, have a family engagement liaison in every one of our schools. And so uh, we have uh, taken these five authentic leadership practices, those questions as a way to develop the leadership in our family engagement liaisons. We want them to lead this work. We want them to know that they are leaders. Um, and we want them to go in their buildings and help their staff and help their principals lead this work. We, we know that uh, 
one person can't do it alone. It takes a whole village and it takes a whole team. So those five authentic leadership practices have been essential in developing a school-wide culture in our buildings around family engagement. Do we have more work to do? Yes, we do. But it's a start and we definitely um, are, are moving toward in that direction of creating school-wide um, um, family engagement. For uh, the next piece, the four equity uh, partnership recommend recommendations, those are our strategies. When you think about it, when you talk, you look at those, those are, when you talk about earning trust or uh, earning trust early, right? That's a strategy, right? That's a strategy. When you talk about shared responsibility intentionally, that's a strategy. Um, all four of those recommendations are really strategies that help us ground the work and where, where we want to go and how we want to do the work. And so uh, when, um, a little bit earlier, Lita talked about APTT, and that's something that we're moving towards this upcoming school year. Um, and so how, how we grounded APTT is through uh, those four strategies. How are we going to earn trust early with APTT? How are we going to share responsibility intentionally? How are we going to balance those expectations uh, transparency? How are we going to measure the, the efforts uh, meaningfully? And so we we have utilized those four uh, uh, equity partnership recommendations as strategies to help us uh, do the work and to help us keep focused on where uh, the work uh, needs to be focused on. Um, so we're not bringing in a bunch of stuff. We're actually keeping it aligned to uh, our focus and our vision of where we want to go. And so that's how this work, uh, you know, our partnership with Trees has really helped us. And then, and then when you talk about another piece that we're bringing in this year, community cafes. Uh, um, and we want to uh, bring in that family voice. We, we want to ensure that our families are also helping us co-construct, co-design, and co-create better school systems, better um, educational systems uh, in our schools and, in, and across our district. And so uh, how do we do that? We look at how do we earn trust, right? How do we share that responsibility? How, so we look through the lens of all of the five uh, leadership practices and the lens of the four equi equity partnership recommendations. So that's really our foundation of how we build everything. Um, so, any, so if another thing comes, we're going to definitely take it through the lens of this work. And so that's, that's how it's helped us immensely. And our hope is that we're going to see the growth of this work uh, elevate uh, this upcoming school year as we move forward. Ah. Um, and just so, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the acronym. What is APTT? It's Academic Parent Teacher Teams. Oh, okay. And this is our first year on it. Lita would know more about the process. So I'm learning this as I, as I, uh, get involved. And matter of fact, I have a meeting after this meeting to talk more about that with, with folks. But yeah, that's uh, that's something we're moving towards in in, 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 a, in our district. Yeah, Kathy, the, um, some of the specific and particular uh, programs and activities that both Isaiah and Lita are referring to have to do with a lot of the the um, either program, programmatic or team-based work that teachers can do in partnership with staff and with families. Awesome. That's so cool. Is that, how are you structuring that within people's school days? I mean, related to the question that we got in the Q&A, or is that? Oh, a, can a I just say this? Uh -huh. the, AP, the APTT, and then I'll let either Lita or Isaiah add to it, but APTT is uh, more of a, um, specific teacher to parent project process um, where the teacher's doing some of the work to make sure that parents learn about the actual classroom activities and their students um, process. So I am not part of APTT um, as I think every district should be able to decide what kind of activities and projects and programs they adopt. So he mentioned APTT as something that he looked at and said, oh yeah, this is something that can help us earn trust with families. It will help us share responsibility. Um, and this is something that we are going to do. So I am not, um, uh, I don't ascribe to all the detailed projects. I just guide people to find the kind of project that will help them do the things that their district wants to adopt. 
Yeah, I really appreciate you saying that, Dr. Moore, because what we think about when I think about the five authentic leadership uh, practices and the way that we are doing this work, I think of it as a guideline, like a, a guide rail, similar to the dual capacity framework. It's not necessarily the strategy that we are we are doing, but it's a guideline for us to keep in mind as we're thinking about how we support schools and implementing the strategies that you know families and their community want to see in those spaces. Okay, and I'm seeing a hand raise, but if you can um, use the Q&A, we'll pull it up and, and grab your question that way. Um, I'm wondering, um, so thinking about the communications part of this, when you were figuring out going out into the communities and doing that work with families, how did you go about it? Um, and I know you said uh, Ivan Durant had something to do with that, but what did that look like in your district? Yeah, so so for us, we wanted to ensure that we were hearing from families and from families we don't always typically hear from. And so we work closely with our schools and um, I have a team of family and community engagement specialists. We have seven in our district and uh, they support our schools with family and community engagement. And so similar to math coaches, our literacy coaches, there are family and community engagement specialists. We also have a bilingual um, paraprofessionals that do instructional support and family engagement work at the school level. And so we set an expectation that we would have um, families from each of our schools participate in these different focus groups. And so we just did intentional outreach, um, followed up, made sure that we had welcoming environment, child care, food, um, all of the things that you need to have in place. And then we followed up with families to, to make sure they understood how we were using the gift that they were giving us and that information. Um, we also have in Highline a family action committee, which is composed of parents uh, from across our system. And again, we do intentional outreach to make sure that we are hearing from and recruiting families who may not traditionally always be at the table. And they meet with our superintendent uh, quarterly and so really working on our strategic plan goals, uh, having them identify the priorities that were important for them um, were just things that we did as we were embarking on um, our strategic plan goal setting. And when you when I talk about this, so Isaiah was able to like speak specifically to uh, the different things that Dr. Moore was sharing with us about the authentic partnership. And as I'm talking about it, you can see how we use this as a framework. So embedded in all of those things, we were earning trust early with, with families. We were identifying and measuring uh, goals meaningfully. We were balancing our expectations and we were sharing responsibility intentionally. Yeah, those are nice structures to have in place when you have just the opportunity, I think, to talk to the superintendent in your district and like the leadership about what's going on. Um, I wonder, okay, so Isaiah, can you talk a little bit about what did it look like in Auburn? Are you doing a similar thing or what's, what are y'all working on? So currently, as I mentioned, we're working on the academic parent teacher teams. We're also working on community cafes. Um, we want to get those up and rolling. We do have some community cafes that are actually taking place, uh, but we but we want to kind of align it to the, the work that we want to do within our district. So our district strategic plan calls out, um, it calls out family voice um, in our foundation number two um, and how family voice uh, will help us to, again, co-construct, co-create, co-design uh, ways that we can improve the uh, educational system uh, for for our families. Uh, also, it calls out welcoming environment. So a lot of a lot of that is called out as well. So when we talk about ways that we're going to integrate and incorporate family voice, uh, one of the things that we um, are looking to do we're adding some ad hoc committees where families and community can uh, come in and, and voice and 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 give us some assessment on how we're doing as a system. Um, we also have, uh, again, uh, again, community cafes that are really going to be part of 
kind of our way of, again, restructuring, revamping kind of how we look at uh, education, how it's meeting the needs of our families. So we're kind of in that beginning. We're not like we're leaders at. We're in the beginning phase of this work. And I got to give I'm going to give a shout out to my superintendent, Dr. Alan Spachati, uh, because he believes in this work. And uh, and again, his his belief in this work is, has been evident in the fact that we have uh, a family engagement liaison in every building. Um, and so that's uh, that that to me speaks to uh, his value and um, his importance of, of of family engagement across the Auburn School District. So we're kind of in that beginning. I don't have like the data to share with you yet, but we're in that beginning. But we have pieces in place where we're going to now, with the help of Treese, giving us kind of some structure around that and some foundation around that to really uh, look at it and start to move forward in that direction. Awesome. Yeah, I think about just the differences in communication and different ways to get to families. The community cafe structure is really interesting that way. And it's great to have the backing of your superintendent and that work. Um, did you notice, like for your um, district, uh, thinking about measuring student success and the data and stuff like that, are there student outcomes that you're specifically looking at that are guiding so, them? Yeah. yeah, so we're actually... Uh, uh, another piece that we're looking at, um, our, our district is really focused on the science of reading. Um, and so we, uh, our family engagement team is currently in the process of learning what the science of reading is. And we're going to ask our, our family engagement liaisons to pick a level to work with. This is something that Anna Therese has also worked with a couple of my family engagement liaisons on this and we're passing this strategy down as well uh, to to look at um, ways how the family engagement liaison partnering with those particular grade levels can help increase reading reading scores um, amongst students um, in, in those schools so we're looking at reading reading outcomes uh, because we feel like that's something that is very important um, especially as we are kind of I don't even no, for post pandemic yet. Um, I feel like we're still in it in a way, but uh, yeah, that's that's something we're definitely looking at. Yeah, um, and uh, Lolita, uh, Dr. Moore talked a little bit about families co-leading and I'm curious, I mean, it sounds like your work is a little bit further along. Um, what does family co-leading look like in, in your district? Yeah, so I'll give an example. We um, also work with the uh, organization called WABS, um, and they have a program called Natural Leaders that we have at some of our schools. And the whole purpose of, of Natural Leaders are for families to bring forward what they want to see have taken place in a school. And a really cool thing that we did this year at a couple of our schools is that we partnered and families wanted to do a math STEM night at the schools and the families that we had um, family members there who led and facilitated, they worked with McKinstry uh, to build windmills. And so the families led the presentation they were seen as leaders and experts in bringing this opportunity to the school and the staff that were there kind of sat back in the background and we were we were like the volunteers like the support that was there and it was just really lovely to see um, the leadership in families that we've worked with for for quite a while and them wanting to step up and 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 take that on for their school community and so that is, that's one way that we have done it. We also um, work with different organizations. So there's an organization called Supporting Partnerships in Education and Beyond, formerly Somali Parents Education Board. And with our leadership forum, um, we had them come and lead at our leadership forum at the beginning and really ask our leaders for what their commitments would be around engaging with families after they shared family and student voice about what their expectations are. And then they came back and they revisited us during the school year. And so um, those are just a couple of different ways where we're bringing and making sure that we're co-creating with our students and families what they want the school experience to be. Amazing. That's cool that you can bring them together in that way and using your family liaisons too as such a um, it's strategic. 
Um, I'm wondering, Isaiah, how are you celebrating wins in your district? What does it look like in Auburn to see the success and to share it? Well, I think, first of all, I mean, when you have a family engagement leads on there. I mean, you celebrate that. I think that's a big celebration because I hear how a lot of districts are actually removing family engagement from their uh, from their system. And I just I just I want to commend Auburn School District for staying true to this course and staying true to this path. I think the other thing, um, you know, as we continue to look at so one of the things one of our goals this year. Um, is to to move from so a lot of our family engagement liaisons we were focused on resources and how to provide resources for families and okay. that was probably because of covid and and all those pieces but now we're moving into student outcome piece which i just shared with you in regards to the reading reading focus um i think as we have our family engagement liaisons build those partnerships with their with those grade levels and we start to see um reading scores increase. We start to see families be, be more engaged and how they can help support their child at home with, with reading, because that's, that's really kind of the emphasis of that partnership. I think we're going we're gonna to celebrate those. We're going to be able to look at that data and celebrate those wins and celebrate the, um, the, the achievements uh, that are going to take place. Because I, I believe when um, true partnerships uh, occur, especially when it comes to family engagement, I, there's nothing else that can happen but achievement. Um, and so I, I really feel like that's, that's the level we're, we're going to take it to um, and we, when it comes to those student outcomes. Also, um, I mentioned the APTT, Academic Parent Teacher. I feel like that's going to be another way for us to uh, also see how families and teachers can interact and support each other and co and co-design and co-construct and work together to build classroom environments uh, that will just be uh, conducive to uh, student learning and student growth. Well, anyway. Kathy, can I can I add something to that? Yeah, go for it. Both both Lolita and Isaiah uh, and I I'm sure they can attest to this. In the celebrating the wins. What I think happens when you have a culturally responsive family partnership process, where, as they said, you build on just the desire to make sure that you are honoring family voice and you're you know, doing this whole thing that we covered. What happens is the celebrations that already are planned in the district and the schools begin to include more of our families. So you don't have to create new celebrations. As a result of this process, you are experiencing opportunities for more of our black and brown families and students to be invited to the activities and the celebrations that have been happening for um, a lot of kids who've been doing well already. And so I, I, I think, again, rather than a new celebration or uh, a creation of other things, you um, will see that more of our black and brown students are students who um, have not been or whose families have not been a part of celebrations. They are now being included and are a part of it because their students are doing better. And now they get to go to the celebrations that other students have been a part of over the years. I think that's a good last word. Um, can we give a round of applause for our panelists? Thanks for being with us today to share a little bit about what's going on in your districts. Um, and I'm noticing lots of people were interested in books in the chat, Dr. Moore. So maybe we can follow up with information on how to how to get a book. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who attended and 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 listened. Absolutely. Um, before you all head out, um, we hope the conversation doesn't end here. Um, we hope that you can talk to your uh, leadership team uh, with other fellow educators and something like a PLC, maybe even lead a discussion with students or parents um, coming up about what you can do to better engage. Um, we do have a few resources for you in the chat. We have a resource sheet with links. Uh, there's uh, various things in here that you might find useful. We have a uh, 
a funding document. So if you want to think about how to fund this work out of uh, funds you already have available, well, that's there. Uh, we also have our engaged newsletter. So if you're interested in um, our articles, uh, Dr. Moore wrote a great article this month, and um, there's more in there to share as far as uh, leadership team meeting activities and, and more. Uh, we also have this awesome family engagement learning webinar series that if you'd like to check it out, um, it's, I believe it's through uh, Johns Hopkins. Um, we've been reading the book Street Data um, and it has some great ideas in it about family engagement and ways that you can um, have conversations that make a big difference. Uh, our website has a family engagement page. We also have uh, a family outreach and engagement page. Uh, if you wanna check out the dual capacity framework that Dr. Moore talked about earlier, uh, that is linked there, uh, as well as the Highline Public Schools family engagement page. Uh, there's also an Institute for Educational Leadership Family Engagement. Um, and of course, you can always contact any of us through email. Uh, OSPI has a contact uh, OSPI staff button that you can use. So if you're not sure who to talk to, we can hook you up with the right person. Uh, next month, we are going to talk about restorative practices. Uh, we have a new director of behavior. Uh, her name's Brianna Kelly, and she's bringing with her Dr. Lori Linus from Sound Supports. Um, she's going to talk about her work coaching schools on restorative practices uh, and just daily practices to build a restorative culture. Uh, so these links are going to be in the resource sheet. Um, and please, we encourage you to invite people who you think might be interested. Um, if you're new to restorative practices or you want to find out um, some of the, the basic one-on-one -on -one information, that'll be there. Um, we changed our webinars significantly with your suggestions. So after the webinar closes, there will be a survey, and I just want to encourage you to please help us uh, know who to bring you next and what topics you're interested in. Um, we try to lean into continuous improvements. Uh, so your suggestions are always helpful and um, launch us into you know the next iteration of this thing. Um, also, if something comes to you later and you have an idea, uh, the survey is linked on our page. It also is in the webinar reminders, so you can come back to it if you want to. We want you to get clock hours for joining us. Uh, if you join live, you've already registered for the year through Zoom. You'll also need to register for clock hours monthly in PD Enroller. PD Enroller is going to send you an evaluation and it'll go to your email. And then we verify your attendance and release your hours. Uh, if you are watching the recording of the video later, the process will change a little bit. Uh, you register each month for clock hours in PD Enroller and you complete the evaluation. And you'll also do our graduation equity uh, feedback survey. And that signals to us that you, that you watched it. Um, and then we verify your attendance that way. Uh, about every two weeks and we release your hours. We can only offer clock hours for the past seven months. Uh, so please do take the time to register and, and get your credits. Uh, and if you have questions, uh, Ronnie Larson's amazing. She does our clock hour support. Please, please email her. And thank you everybody for coming with us today. Um, we do hope to um, follow up with some more book information and uh, awesome work today panel and Dr. Moore and our interpreters and support. Um, Y'all are fantastic. And yeah, we'll see you next month for restorative practices. Thank you.